Welcome back to Master Glass. I'm your host, Livio, and today we're gonna discuss the gimlet. It's that time, finally. I'm excited to bring to you this really cool classic cocktail. I'm gonna show you three different versions. I have proudly partnered with Nika Gin out of Japan. 47% uh, alcohol by volume. The reason why I feel like it's gonna be incredible inside of these gimlets is because it has four different Japanese citruses in the recipe. Oh, and by the way, there's also citrus in the gimlet, so it's gonna be a home run. Let's get into this. It is great to have you all here back today on Master Your Glass. We're gonna talk about the gimlet cocktail. The gimlet cocktail is basically equal parts of gin and roses lime cordial. Now it became popular, or was drunk, I should say, uh, by British sailors in the late 19th century. You see, they had a little problem. The problem was they had a lack of vitamin C, and that was giving them scurvy. Now this lime right here has a ton of vitamin C, so it helped save the day. Uh, scurvy could be a really nasty disease, and quite honestly, you can die from it, but even if you don't, all the side effects of scurvy are terrible. But to save the day came Admiral Gimlet, which is probably where the drink gets its name from. Admiral Gimlet started serving limes and citrus to the sailors and kind of saved the day. Now lime, of course, doesn't hold very well and it can go bad, so mixing it with alcohol was the way to go. Now the British sailors, they received rum, whereas the officers of the British uh, Navy, they received gin. So kind of two different cocktails came about. One of them was the grog made with rum, and the other one is the one we're talking about today, which is the gimlet. The gimlet cocktail might have also gotten its name from the gimlet, which was a hand tool that the sailors would use in order to puncture a hole inside of the barrels in order to get the spirits that they were using to then mix with lime. And so that could be the second way that this cocktail got its name. But what we do know are two things for sure. It became popular in 1953 thanks to a novel called The Long Goodbye by Raymond Chandler in which the main character basically says the gimlet cocktail is made with equal parts of gin and roses lime cordial and it is better than a martini hollow. Who knows? Is it better? We're going to find out today. Uh, another really important uh, notion here to, uh, to uh, uh, discuss uh, about this cocktail is that Rose's Lime Cordial, which was created in 1876 by a Scottish entrepreneur whose last name, of course, was uh, Rose, uh, is the first fruit preserve product on the market. And it made it into the drink because it was easier, of course, to keep uh, from going bad, and it became a key ingredient of the gimlet, which is why it was considered a 50-50. Even in Harry Craddock's book from 1930, The Savoy Cocktail, the gimlet was listed uh, not only as a gimlet with an M, G-I-M-L-E-T, but also gimblet with a B. The gimlet was equal parts of gin and rose's lime cordial. The gimlet had a different proportion, and it was made with fresh lime. So today, like I said, we're gonna make three different versions. The first one I'm gonna make is the good old fashioned regular gimlet, J equal parts of gin and Rose's lime cordial. The second one I'm gonna make is basically, let's just call it a gin daiquiri, which is gin, lime juice, simple syrup, nice shaken and served up. And then the last one I'm gonna make is I'm gonna first produce my very own lime cordial and then I'm going to use that into the 50-50 recipe, which was the classic. I'm ready, let's do this. As I mentioned, I'm gonna make three different versions of this drink today. I'm gonna to start with the classic, uh, the benchmark, and now everybody might say, well, the benchmark isn't necessarily the best one. It's not, but it is the benchmark simply because it's the way this drink was created, and that is with the equal parts of gin and uh, the roses uh, lime cordial. So what I'm gonna do here is, is I'm just going to chill my tin, add ice, just like so. And then in my glass here, I'm gonna start with the gin first. Now, as you know, uh, if you follow me, I like to start with the base spirit first. It's the starting point. Uh, in this cocktail today, of course, it's a gin-based cocktail. We're gonna use Nika Gin. What is Nika Gin? It's a gin made out of Japan, 47% alcohol by volume. It's called coffee gin. Now, what exactly is coffee? It's not what you think. Coffee, you see, 
is basically a still that was installed by the founder of Nika in 1963. This gin is made with two base spirits, one of which is corn and one of which is malted barley. The really cool thing about this gin is it's, it has this bright and zesty aroma that comes basically from four different Japanese citruses. And then along with that, they have the traditional botanicals which you will find in gin that are typically juniper berries, angelica, coriander seeds, lemon peel, and orange peels. There's also a touch of apples. So in here, I'm gonna go ahead and put one ounce and a half or, three, uh, or 45 mils of gin. As a matter of fact, with the sour glass that I'm using, in order to equal part it, I'm gonna add another half. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two ounces just like that. That means 60 mils of Nika gin. And I'm gonna match that with two ounces, 60 mils of Rose's Lime Cordial. Now there's some debate that goes between should this drink be stirred or should this drink be shaken? And the reason of that is because Rose's Lime Cordial uh, is not really a juice, it's not really a syrup, it doesn't require a shaking in order to mix it. Uh, however, I really find that as you upgrade to versions made with, uh, with homemade cordial or made with lime juice and simple syrup that you do shake it. So to keep it apples to apples, I'm gonna shake. I'm gonna just give this a light little shake though. Just like that, give it a seal. And not, a, not going too hard on it. Okay. Now I feel like the proper garnish with this type of glass and this type of drink is just gonna be a really thin sliced, I mean really thin sliced lime wheel. You make sure I'm not too thin there and then I don't make a wheel, I make something that looks different. We'll set that right over there. And there we go. And there you have the first version. The next version I'm gonna make is the one with the fresh lime. I've also alluded to this as to being kind of like a gin daiquiri. Uh, and that's basically what it is. This one here, instead of being a four ounce recipe, I'm gonna make it three and a half, but I'm gonna give it a harder shake and gonna take advantage of a little more dilution. Okay, let's do that. So in this mixing glass here, I'm gonna go ahead and add one and a half ounces plus a half equals two ounces, 60 mils of Nika gin. There we go. By the way, the founder of Nika was also considered the godfather of Japanese whiskey, so you should really look up this brand. It's really cool. To this now, I'm gonna go ahead, oh, forgot to chill my glass. Definitely do that. Now, so to this, I'm going to add one ounce of fresh lime juice. And how convenient is it that a lime almost always gives you, a medium-sized lime almost always gives you exactly one ounce of lime juice. Now to this, I'm gonna add because I do want it to be a little tart, half, of out, half an ounce of simple. There we go. Okay, now this version here, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it should be considered, it should be called a gimlet with a B in between, simply because the fresh lime juice version in the 1930 book of Harry Craddock, which by the way, I have a version right here, it was actually called a gimlet with a B. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. 
So as you can see here, you had a gimblet with a B, and in this one here, it said lime juice, and then you had a gimlet without a B, and in this one here, it basically said roses lime juice, or roses lime cordial. So, having done all that, let's go ahead and give this a nice little shake. All right. This drink definitely has that nice little sizzle that I'm hearing right now. Go. Okay. And there we go. And there we have the gimblet with a B. So now I'm gonna show you how I am going to make my lime cordial. What I did here is a lot of the lime cordial recipes will call for some liquids, then they'll call for ingredients that need to be weighed. Uh, I didn't wanna to bring to the table a scale and so many other ingredients. So I basically, I weighed everything before starting and I've just converted everything into a measurement that I can add inside of a measuring device. And I used a technique which I am calling 7233. The first part, the seven, is basically seven ounces of simple syrup. Let me go ahead and pour that in. Um, there's two. Uh, what's the benefit of this type of syrup here that I'm, or this type of cordial that I'm making, I should say, is it's gonna have those bitter notes that are inside of roses that are not coming from the fresh lime. So there is, my seven ounces of simple syrup. The next thing I'm gonna use is two ounces of citric acid, which I put right here. So citric acid is basically a natural ingredient. It's found in so many food items and it's easy to get a hold of. I'm just gonna tear this bag off, open that up. And in here, I'm gonna add two ounces of the citric acid. There we go. Looks like two to me. We'll pour that in. And then again, I went to measurements. This is just basically three ounces of lime zest. Pour that in like that. And three fluid ounces of lime juice. Okay, I'm gonna give this a spin for about 30 seconds. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna just grab the bottle. I wanna put this in. Grab a little funnel. A couple of fine strainers. I find that this should be nice and clean, but if I use the finest strainer, it'll block everything, it won't come down. Uh, but if I use a couple of them, I might be a little more lucky in this. Just like that. Grab a little spoon and help facilitate this part right here. Looking good. So what I have here and just for uh, for uh, those who are curious, that right there, this here is a 16 ounce bottle. So what I have here is roughly nine ounces coming from my uh, 7233 combination. I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna make a drink with it. Now it's time for the much expected third version of the Gimlet. I'm gonna go ahead and chill this glass right here. All right, and Add some ice. Okay, so in this version right here, I'm gonna go back to the equal parts. So I'm gonna add 60 mLs or two ounces of the Nika gin. And 
And then I'm gonna add 60 mils or two ounces of the homemade lime cordial. All right, let's give this a shake and see what it's all about. Now, one thing about this being a homemade cordial is it's probably not as clear and translucent, translucent as roses. So I'm gonna go ahead and fine strain this just to keep out any other um, color variation or any floaty that I really don't want to see in the drink. I love the color here. And we are ready to go. Here it is, the Gimlet. Okay, so let me jump right into the tasting of the first one. This is the traditional one, equal parts of Nika Gin and Rose's Lime Cordial. On the aroma, I really don't get anything other than the beautiful citrus aroma of the gin itself. Maybe a little touch of peppery also coming from the, the Nika Gin. Now, I'll be honest with you, this is the first time that I try the Gimlet with roses. I was honestly expecting it not to be as good as it is. Not saying it's incredibly delicious, but not as bad as I was actually thinking this was going to be. Puckery, just a touch of sweetness, a little bit of bitterness, and boy is that gin coming out really, really nicely. Two ounces of it is really pushing up Again, not as bad as I thought. Of course, there's room for improvement and hopefully that improvement will come right about now. This version here that I am tasting is the gin with the lime juice and the simple syrup backed off the percentage of the lime sugar combination with there being more gin in here. So this is basically what you could also consider a gin daiquiri of sorts. Same thing on the aroma. Really the gin is popping out, not getting even a touch of citrus. There it is, just a little touch of citrus note right there. Oh yeah, just a much better, cleaner version. Um, there's something nice to be said about that combination of fresh lime and simple syrup and gin. Really clean, really delicious, extremely crushable. Um, the only thing that it's missing from this version here is that tad of bitterness, which the roses has, but the lime juice and the simple does not. Now I tried pressing the lime. Uh, I did press the lime, hoping that some of those essential oils would give some bitterness to the drink. It did not really show up. Nonetheless, way better than this one. And yes, not the same drink, but definitely I would drink a hundred of these way before I would drink one of these. Now let's go on to the last version. This was the version here going back to the classic with equal parts of gin and homemade lime cordial. There's a little more umph on the aroma here. Yeah, definitely I'm getting the zest of the lime on this one. Yep, it's all there. Just a lot more. There's a little bit um, uh, lime oil, lime peel oil aroma going on. I really like. Oh, much more firm, much more firm. This is more of a serious cocktail. The, the Nika is being able to express itself a lot better than the previous two versions. And uh, the Lime Cordial is no joke. I wish I would have tasted it um, on its own because it's really coming out nicely. So the question is, is which one do I like between these two? Um, I do like the last version, the third version, the best. It's got that nice little bitter note, notes coming out. Citrus, sweetness, uh, Nika's there, present, I can taste it. Um, 
I do love this one as well. It's got a different application to me. This is when I'm not making a lime cordial, when I don't have a blender and I don't want measuring cups and devices and all of that. And then I'll go ahead and make this version here because it is delicious. And believe it or not, if all you have is Rose's Lime Cordial, then you can make that version as well. Again, not my cup of tea, but not as bad as I actually thought. Uh, if you found value in this uh, episode of Master Glass, I know I did because I got to drink here, uh, please go ahead and give us a like and subscribe and hit the bell so that you can go back to Master Glass with me, Livio, and you can get more expert instruction for everyday consumption. <laughs>